Hello, and welcome to the Communist Party's response to Trump's State of the Union address. I'm here with uh, Rosanna Cambron. Actually, I'm in New York, and Rosanna is in Los Angeles. Hey, Rosanna, yes, how are you? I'm okay, Joe. I'm just trying to, my stomach's trying to get readjusted back after listening to all that BS. Oh, my God. He was full of it. I yes. mean, just completely, completely full of it. He says there's been a blue-collar boom, for example. Yeah. <laughs> a boom on our head. Yeah. You know? I say, I say who, who, who among us working people has really felt that boom? Not yeah. many. No. Not many, no. for example. He talks about the low rate of unemployment, but what he don't mention is that working people got to to work two, three, some, you know, jobs in order to make ends meet, you know? Right. And those, and some of them are college educated. Right. And that's, you know, I mean, my own son works two jobs. And do you know that, you know, like maybe uh, three out of five or maybe three out of seven college students uh, who graduate from college are now forced to live at home because they can't afford to move out? Yeah. Of their family. I mean, you know, yeah. I know dead. quite a few of them. Yeah, definitely. It's incredible. In mm -hmm. Incredible. You mm -hmm. know, I was struck that Trump tried to focus at least the first part of his speech trying to portray himself as a uh, champion of working class interests. You know, right. Right. did you hear that? I did, yes. I was also stunned by, by all the focus on um, uh, African Americans. Huh. Yeah. I was like, okay, now, you know, people of color are his friends. Come no. on, give me a break. Focusing on us. Do you know that they're going into black communities offering cash prizes for people to attend their events? Like they oh, my a, goodness. Yeah, they had an event in Cleveland. If you come to our event, you can win a $15,000 prize, you know? You know, I that's mean, a strategy that was that has been used in the past in uh, among Latin America. Mm. They pay people, you know, you come and eat, you get money, things like that. Our vote is not for sale, Mr. Nope. Trump. Don't mm -hmm. even try it. Right. No, don't no, even, no. don't even try it. And then also in his speech, he devoted uh, a huge part of it to attacking immigrants, you know? Yes. Um, but, I mean, you know, going, you know, uh, touting ICE and and uh, the number of arrests and and then once again painting, you know, immigrants read code word for people from coming from Mexico and Central America as criminals and you know rapists sh shooting people and so on and so forth. You know, yeah, just as demagogic as he could possibly be. It's oh, it's shameful, God. really, really shameful. The to have a president who's talking about God and all of these kinds of things, and then he he attacks people who are hardworking people who make such a sacrifice to by leaving their countries because they know their families are starving, yes. and they know that they they have no other choice. Who in their mind would leave all that they know, what's familiar to them, uh, and to to come? 2,000 miles or risk the, you know, going, coming on the border, crossing the border, not knowing what's going to happen. It's, it's out of necessity, out of pure hunger and desperation that people come to look for some better life. And to accuse them of these other things is just, it's just unimaginable. It's, it's devilish. It's devilish, and what he's basically doing when he talks about trying to make America great again, he means make it white again, which it never mm -hmm. was anyway. Right. right. You know? I mean, come yeah. on, you know that whole that that whole fantasy, good old days when, you know, life was suburban, and it, it never really existed. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, because this has always been a multiracial and multinational uh, country. Right. Um, and, and only then, a few have benefited from it. You know, exactly. So make it a great again for what, the 1% or the less than 1%? The rich and the uh, super rich, you right. know? Mm -hmm. um, 
and just a good ongoing, you know, demagogy in in the uh, speech. I was I was, uh, and then let's talk about the military and the focus on military mm. families. I know that must have made you sick as well because you've been active in the uh, military families uh, movement for peace. Um, yes, it, it's. Uh, I thought it was really shameful, you know, to have put his wife you know, the, the soldier's wife, the family mm. in that position, because there is nobody that knows the pain and, and that you feel and the, the, the joy that you think you're seeing as a family is reunited. People don't understand that it's a painful moment. It is not just being happy to see your loved one come home. It's also about all of the pain and the, mm. and the, the, the unknowing that you have been feeling all of this time, whether your loved one is alive or dead, how they're going to come back. So all of those moments are not just about being happy. It's about a whole mix of emotions. Mm. And to put, that, to put his wife in that position mm. and their children, you know, mm. the children are young. They, they have to orientate themselves to who their father is. And to, to do that in public, I think it's just a, a real shameful way of using uh, families that way. It was it was very shameful. I just... So he wouldn't know nothing about that because yeah. he, he never he had a bone spur in his mm -hmm. foot and avoided a military service. Mm -hmm. You know, um, he had a choice, unlike so many of our brothers exactly. and sisters who are forced to go into the military because there's a poverty draft. Right. And uh, they don't have any other choice but to go there to seek advancement and a job and some what they think might be training and so yeah. on and and uh, and uh, so forth. I noticed that he didn't talk about impeachment, even though he refused to shake <laughs> Mrs. Pelosi's hand. Mm -hmm. uh, he he uh, he uh, took GOP advice and avoided that. But you can run. Um, but you can't hide, right. you know? Um, and I think there's going to be a vote tomorrow in the uh, Senate. Uh, they expect that he will be acquitted. Yeah. Um, but the big issue is what comes next, and uh, both for Trump and, and the election campaign and the country, you know? Yeah. You uh, know, the, the Senate can acquit him, but the people can, can try him and, right. and can kick him out. I mean, the people have the power. We have the power, even in the states where, where we are saying that there, where people are saying or polls say that he has a base. Mm. It 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 requires everyone else in that state to come out and vote to get him out, because we have the numbers, and I think people uh, really should uh, un understand that and feel that they have the power to 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 remove him from office and put in someone that is much better, that it will meet our needs. You know, we see this examples throughout Latin America. We've been seeing it in the, in the most desperate situations or where you feel, oh, you know, we're gonna be having this kind of repressive government. People have risen up. They, they've been understanding that they have the numbers to get these repressive governments out and they've been doing it. The most recent one is Mexico, where right. we have a, they have a president that has out of the 100 um, campaign uh, promises, he's met 80 of them. 80. Wow. 80 of them. Mm. And, and, and all of the money that has been used to provide new programs, pensions, uh, has been because he has cut a lot of the things that all of the luxuries that the elite have, have been enjoying. Mm. He's cut the pensions of the ex-presidents where they have just robbed the country. I mean, all of this thievery, he has been cutting it all out. And he's saying, this is the money, the people's money. And so I'm using it for, for this, for this purpose, for education, healthcare, all of these kinds of things. So we have the power as a people in the United States to also remove him. The senators may not want to, but we want to. But don't you think in order to remove him that you know, and as important as it is to remove Trump, and I think that's the central yeah. task of our times, in a certain sense, it has to be more than just about Trump. The people have to have something to vote for, some, right. some hope for real change, you know, and, 
and, and therefore the, the issues that are emphasized in the primaries and in the general election are really important, you know, like Medicare for all, you know, and um, um, the, 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 the issue of, you know, um, real uh, jobs, you know, and health care. And speaking of Medicare for all, just for a, a moment, you know, Trump just went up there and just lied during the State mm. of the Union and said, I will protect um, pre-existing conditions. When his yeah. administration <laughs> has been working studiously to cut preconditions, you know, pre-existing conditions, the Justice yeah. Department is trying to overturn Obamacare. And I mean, just, just, just blatant. <laughs> Blade, it's not funny, actually. It's right. actually yeah. tragic, you know. I, I think that that's really important for American people to really look into it deeper, you know, not just believe the things that he sees on face value or any candidate, uh, you know, in face value. We have the opportunity through the internet to do our research. And it doesn't take a lot of research to understand who really is on working class side. And, you know, I really would like to urge everyone to always make sure that they stay well informed, not just take things on face, you know, by saying, oh, I've done it, but really look to really see if it has been done, because otherwise we're going to be making choices that are not going to be for our benefit. That's a really important point, you know. Mm -hmm. Don't necessarily believe us, you know, go right. out and study the facts yourself and right. uh, draw the conclusions, you know, because yeah. there's a lot of fakery fake information, tricks uh, taking place uh, uh, in the uh, media and, um, and on the part of the Trump administration. And people, you know, live, we live in an era of so much disbelief, you know, yeah. and, and distrust. So it's really important for us, all of us, you know, to go out and study the issues yes. our, ourselves. I think it's going to be a tough campaign, Rosanna. Um, yeah. uh, I think there's going to be a lot of provocations, a lot of uh, threats, a lot of controversy. But I think if we keep our eye on the prize and keep forward the issues of, of unity, and if we focus on the progressive issues like health care and housing and real immigration reform, you know, um, and jobs, and um, these kinds of things, ad addressing the issue of uh, student debt, putting forward the issue of free college education, mm -hmm. and so on and so forth, um, I think we're going to be, I think we're going to do OK. How does it look in California? California's going blue, you think? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think, you know, I think you're right. We, we need to keep our eyes on the prize, on the issues. We need to be very mindful not to fall into kind of things that, that uh, these small little propaganda pieces that make us kind of, uh, well, which in turn, it really is, just becomes gossip. Mm -hmm. You know, oh, well, she didn't do this and or he didn't do this or whatever. No, let's, let's say, you know, this candidate has a track record of doing these things for working people. This candidate does not have that track record. And that's what we need to base it on not rumors, not anything else. Don't fall for those kinds of things, but look at the facts. And like I said, we, we have in this day and age that opportunity to just do some quick research and we can say, see who exactly has the track record, the actual, not just words, but in actions and deeds uh, that meet the, meet the needs of people. So um, I think, you know, we, we have some struggles here in California uh, I don't think that we can just kind of say everything is going to be okay in California. We always have to be working hard uh, because anytime at any point we can get, uh, get too confident and they can slip in. So I think, you know, we always have to be very mindful. And you know, the other thing that I think that we need to say this evening is that the Communist Party stands for real change, you know? We think it is imperative that we defeat Trump you know, um, and not just him, but to break the back of the Republican right-wing neoliberal grip on the Congress and the judiciary. 
Um, but in order to push back the right wing danger, which is growing into a fascist like danger, we're not there yet. But if we don't Trump stop Trump, we will get there. Mm -hmm. But in order to address it, we have got to find a way to make radical reforms in the country, both in the political life and in the economic life, and bring some sense of economic security and comfort and opportunity and, 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 and confidence for poor and uh, working people. So you're not worried about losing your home. You're not worried about losing your job. You're not worried about the environment collapsing, you know, and climate change. Um, so that our children have a sense of some real future. Yes. Um, and, and people are increasingly beginning to see the need uh, for a radical economic and political reform to make that happen. And that's what the party stands for, ultimately socialism, a socialist USA. Right. So that, fun, as, that fundamental change that's going to meet people's needs, put people before profits. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And save the planet, save humanity yes. from the likes of Trump and uh, company. And I think mm -hmm. we're going to get there. Yeah. Well, it's been an interesting night. Um, I know you need to go into your uh, 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 medicine closet and get some Pepto-Bismol <laughs> instead of your stomach. After right. watching um, uh, Mr. Trump, uh, I'm going to go home and drink some ginger ale. That's my uh, remedy. We want to thank everybody for uh, watching. We want to invite you to visit our website at cpusa.org. We want to invite you to, to read our online publication of the People's Movement, peoplesworld.org, uh, um, and join us in the ongoing struggle to fight the Trump agenda. Thank you, and uh, good, good night. night. See you later, Rosanna. Bye, Take Joe. Take care. Bye-bye.